Harrison down here on the sideline again. One thing about Paloma Valley's offense with this uh, spread formation they're running, every receiver has at least two options on every play on what he's going to run. For example, he lines up, he can decide between a post route, out pattern, crossing, fake, etc. It's all based on what the defense is showing at the line of scrimmage. Obviously, it takes a lot of time to get on the same page. Quarterback has to be able to make the same reads. But when this is working, it's really, really tough to stop because you're using what the defense is doing against them to your advantage. It'll be interesting to see over the course of the year how Paloma adjusts to this long term. Kevin Pearson down here on the sideline again. Just talked to West Valley coach Jason Thornburg, and he said the last touchdown they allowed defensively was man coverage, nobody over the top to help. He said that's something they're not going to do a lot of this year is the man coverage. He said he wants to stick primarily with the zone, but he's using this as an opportunity to see if his team can run man, particularly for situations where they're blitzing a lot. That way they can see if their corners and their safeties can survive out on the island by themselves. Obviously did not work that time, but it is a work in progress for them. Kevin Pearson down here on the sideline again. Uh, Paloma Valley and West Valley getting a little chippy out there, former league opponents. Uh, Berg Esposito obviously did not like the call a few minutes ago. Thought that uh, his guys had tackled the guy, obviously the ref missed it. Uh, Esposito was saying that he expects things to get a little bit more chippy as the day progresses. Pool play, yeah, it's all fun and games. It's competition now. These guys want to win this tournament. A lot of it's about pride. As the night goes on, expect these guys to go from one hand touch to start wrapping each other up a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how this progresses. Sideline again. One thing Riverside Arlington is doing today, and that they're going to be doing a lot of this season, Superior Reed, their standout running back. He's going to be lining up a lot in the slot, kind of as an H-back, in addition to his running back duties. Coach and staff just told me the biggest difference for him between last year and this year, his ability to catch the football is something he really, really worked hard at. Obviously, this guy is a fantastic athlete on the football field and on the track, has a ton of speed. Look for him to be used in a lot of different ways to try to get the best mismatch possible to exploit the other team's defense. He certainly has the ability to do it, and now that he can catch any way they can get the ball in his hands, they are going to. Back up here on the sideline, one of the special players in this game over here with West Valley is Damone Backus. He's a sophomore middle linebacker. The kid is going to be a special player over the next couple of years. As a freshman last year, had 110 tackles for West Valley. Spoke to him earlier today. He said he was really, really timid when they put him up on varsity. He did not think he was ready. After about a week, he looked at the coaching staff and said, you know what, I'm ready, this is where I belong. Ever since then, he's been a special player for them. He is the man in the middle. Jason Thornburg, the coach for West Valley, keeps comparing him to Vontae's Perfect, the former All-American linebacker from Corona Centennial, who's now having an All-American career at Arizona State. A violent type of player, but also a smart, physical, downhill type guy. Backus. Class of 2013 is a guy that will certainly turn some heads over the next three years after R.A. turning heads last year for West Valley. They say he has the potential to be maybe the best defensive player to ever come through that school. Certainly, we'll see what happens over the next Kevin Pearson down here on the field again. Just talked to West Valley coach Jason Thornburg. Right now, they are switching quarterbacks every series. Uh, a couple deep throws on this series they just had were by senior Mitchell Dotson. He's the one with the stronger arm right now, but Connor Donahue Jr. is a little bit more accurate, makes better decisions. Thornburg said by the start of the season, he's going to go with one guy. He's not a fan of the two quarterback system, but certainly both these guys is there neck and neck. It's a tough decision at this point, and they're both playing very well. Uh, looking right now, uh, Paloma Valley quarterback Logan Tutwiler obviously just made an impressive throw down here while he was on offense. Last year, Tutwiler did not look anything like the quarterback he is today. In fact, he was about four to five inches shorter. Coach Bert Esposito joked that he looked like a seventh grader out there. Completely overwhelmed. Was about 20 pounds lighter. The offseason, shot up. He's close to six foot now, starting to fill out his frame. He's only a junior. And let's just say that's helped him immensely. Esposito says he's getting more leverage on the ball. He's able to see over his line when there is a line out there and certainly likes what this kid can do, especially with their spread option offense, where there's a lot of reading involved. Plays very well, getting very familiar with the system. 
obviously just through another touchdown pass right now. Arlington has the football on this end of the field. The clock is actually up, but right now the rules of the tournament say that they get to finish their drive. Arlington right now in a do or die situation. They're down 12 to 7, have to score a touchdown on this final drive. We'll see how the Lions respond right here, guys. Basically what we're looking at here, guys, the overtime rules. Both teams get the ball starting on the 10, like college. Both teams are going to get a possession. It's going to go back and forth. Obviously, uh, you know, Paloma made, three, Paloma made three stops within the five-yard line to force this. Uh, on that last play, Paloma Valley was actually credited for it being sacked. The clock on the field had it at 3.63 before his release. They're only allowed 3.5 seconds. And now we are actually in a triple overtime, guys. Triple overtime is about to start. All right, I'm here with uh, Jason Thornburg, uh, coach of West Valley. Uh, what happened on that last play there, coach? You know, the... Uh, Guys went up, officials said incomplete, and then after about 30 seconds of negotiating, said it was a catch. So I just thought, you know, he got talked into it for whatever reason. But you deal with it. Uh, what do you tell your guys after something like that, where a triple overtime game can go <laughs> anyway? And what do you tell them? I was proud of them. I thought they competed well. Sometimes you got to deal with bad calls, and it's a lesson. I'd rather learn that lesson now than having a redo or something that you don't get in a regular season. Do you think that this is something that they can look back on and when the regular season comes and know that they've dealt with adversity from different situations? I agree 100%. What do you, do, what do you tell them before the next game in terms of getting them to refocus? Keep your composure. It's a new game. You just play and uh, no excuses. That game's over. We can't whine about it. We can't make anything. It's, it's part of the game. You, just, you can't control those things. You can't control the weather. You can't control officials. That was a fun game. It was great, and I still thought our kids competed well against a good Paloma passing team. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you.